Hello everyone, welcome to Willow Class's Parent Information Presentation. Uh, my name is Mrs Wyatt and I'm Miss Roberts and we teach Willow Class. So Miss Roberts does... Uh, so I'm teaching here three days a week um, and Mrs Wyatt teaches in here the other two days. And we also have Mrs Shepherd in with us uh, nearly every single day and she covers uh, PPA cover on a Thursday afternoon and we have Mrs Layton who is in here in the afternoons as a teaching assistant as well. Okay, so I'm just going to talk to you a bit about the rules and expectations of our school. You will have copies of these slides to read in more detail. Um, but we're a very caring school. Um, we reinforce good behaviour through and positive attitudes through having high expectations, but also through lots of use of positive praise and being really caring and nurturing. Um, our ethos is striving to be the best versions of ourselves, and we try and instill that in the children and remind them of that. Um, we promote positive relationships, um, and we keep coming back with the children to having that common purpose of, of what we're doing is to help everybody so they can learn and to feel happy and safe within school. Okay, so in Willow class, um, we have very high expectations of the children in terms of behaviour, but also in terms of their learning and what it is that they can achieve. Um, our behaviour management is based on having clear boundaries with the children, based on mutual respect, so whatever we expect from them, and um, we also show them those behaviours from us as well. We use lots of positive praise to reward the children and also as a first port of call to remind them if anybody um, is forgetting some of our, our class rules. We're very inclusive, so everything we do is uh, designed to make sure that every child can access it and enjoy the learning and that there's support available for any child that needs more support. Uh, and we really just try and promote that love of learning through lots of active learning, um, try and look at different ways of engaging the children through lots of creative hooks. Okay, so the new morning routines, um, you've had a, you've done quite a few times now, but just kind of to recap, um, the children are now coming into school on their own and um, meeting an adult at the gate so that they can have their hands sanitised and we can um, minimise um, the amount of people on the playground at any one time. Um, so our pod C enters at the gate by the trim trail. Um, and we do just ask that if you do need to pass any messages on, um, if there's anything that you feel that, that, that the staff in school need to know, as far as possible, if you could please pass that on via a phone call to the school office, that would be really helpful because the adults on the gate are trying to make sure the children have their hands clean on the way in. Um, if you feel that there's something you'd like to speak at um, to either myself or Mrs Wyatt um, in more of a, a longer meeting, then please again just contact the school office and we, and we can arrange a time and date for that. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the equipment that your child will need in Willow Class. So at present we are not doing proper PE lessons due to COVID restrictions. So we're doing light PE activities. So your child does not need to bring their kit at the moment, but once we begin to release some of the regulations, um, your child will be asked to bring their PE kit into school, but we will let you know when that is. Um, the children, when they do bring their PE kits into school, will need their house coloured top and black shorts. Um, they can bring white trainers or black daps in with them as well, and socks. Um, and when it's cold or rainy, your child is allowed to wear their school jumper, um, and they can bring some jogging bottoms in. Um, and uh, these must also be black. At present, the children do not need to bring in any pencil cases or any equipment. They each have a pencil case in their drawer, which is theirs. It has um, equipment in it that they need. So there's no need for them to be bringing in anything from home. Um, they should have their water bottle with them every day with fresh water in it, um, coats on days when it's chilly and um, there is the option as well for them to bring wellies in if it's a particularly rainy day. Uh, we have been trying to promote outside learning quite a lot at the moment and so if you feel that your child would benefit from wearing wellies instead of their school shoes um, at play times and um, during these outdoor activities they can bring their wellies with them and wear those. Okay, so one of the differences between Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 is that um, the children are not provided with a free snack at break time. Um, so they used to have fruit in, in Year 2, but they no longer have that in Key Stage 2. So if your child has toast for break time, then that's brilliant. They can continue having that. But if you would prefer for them to have something else, they are invited to um, allow to um, bring in a piece of fruit from home. Um, we find that it really helps with the children's concentration throughout the morning. I certainly know that I can't survive on not having a biscuit at break time or a piece of fruit at break time, so it's the same for the children as well. Um, toast money is to be paid in advance, and that can be done through parent mail, and I know lots of you have been doing that already, so that's really good. 
and um, milk can be paid for as well uh, with the office and um, that's given to the children on a term basis and then it's updated as the year goes on. Okay, so our class routine that you'll need to be aware of, um, I'm just going to talk you through that now. So in a few weeks time, once we've got into more of our core learning, um, we will start doing ta times tables tests for the children in class and we will do that on a Monday. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about homework in a little bit, but you'll have that opportunity for them to get in that last little bit of practice over the weekend and they'll have their times table test uh, in class on Monday. We will also hand out children's new reading books on a Monday for them to take home and they should be taking those home every day in their book bag wallet and then bring them back into school every day as well because adults will read with them over the course of the week. Um, on Tuesday we will then check that reading log and the expectation is that the children have read um, at least five times throughout the week but obviously more is great. Um, at this point I would just say if there's anything, if there's anything that you really focus your time on with your children at home this year it would be reading. The more they do at home, the more progress we see with their reading, their speaking and listening, and their writing in school. So please, please do make that time, even just little and often, to read with them at home. So on the Tuesday, we will have a look at the reading log, and we will look for the previous week. So we will look for the Monday to Sunday from the previous week. Um, and we will keep a record of the children that have read at least five times a week. And we like to celebrate that with the children um, at the end of the term, if they've managed to achieve that over the term. Um, on Friday, again, once we're more into our core learning, we will begin um, spelling term work. And our plan is to utilise Google Classroom that we set up during lockdown. Um, more information will be sent out nearer the time, but the idea will be that um, new spelling term work will be available on Google Classroom on a Friday. And we would be expecting the previous weeks to have been handed in and submitted. But more information will come when we're starting all this up. Um, we will also on that Friday then do a spellings test of the words that the children have been practising for their homework and on a Friday we will also be from now collecting in all reading books um, and the reason for that is so that all reading books can be quarantined over the weekend um, to allow children to then choose fresh books again on the Monday. That doesn't mean they can't read over the weekend so if you've got any books at home you want them to read you can absolutely be recording that in the reading record and that can count towards their five reads or more per week. So we're going to go on to be talking a little bit about what exactly it is we teach the children in Year 3. Um, but our values and threads that hopefully you've, you've become aware of um, as a parent are very much something that is merged through everything that we do. So our eight values of ambition, mindfulness, honesty, resilience, compassion, thankfulness, respect and curiosity. We talk to the children a lot about just throughout the school day. We refer to them all the time when we're making choices and when they are. And we, that's the language we try and use lots with the children. Um, the five golden threads of community, mental health, life skills, global issues and technology were actually something that came out um, last academic year or even the year before actually um, when we spoke to yourself as parents and when we spoke to staff and children about what they wanted to learn more about. So we've been working really hard as a staff over the last year of weaving those five threads through uh, all of our topics um, just to really enrich the curriculum that we deliver the children. So the recovery uh, curriculum, hopefully you have received the roadmap from us, so you've read a little bit about that, and you, I'm sure you've probably heard the term used a lot um, when talking about schools returning following lockdown. Um, the idea really is that our children have been out of school for a long time, even if they have come into school, it's not been school as they know it, so we're really trying to gently prepare them for coming back to school in a more normal way. Um, to do that we initially focused on rules, routines and relationships, so just getting the children back into school, seeing their friends again, and learning rules to keep Covid safe, meeting their new teachers and staff, um, and the children settled really, really well and really quickly. They've done, uh, they've done really well so far. Um, the next couple of weeks we've been doing lots of learning about Covid and the pandemic itself, again, giving the children the opportunities to really share their feelings and thoughts. Um, and lots of just fun and enjoyment, outdoor learning, art, um, science, so the children have been really enjoying um, the topic that, we, that we're doing so far. Our plan for the rest of the term is to gradually be introducing more of the, the maths and the English um, in shorter bursts at start because we, we appreciate the children won't have the stamina to sit down for an hour maths lesson having not been in more formal school for a long time um, and we will be at the children's pace where we can see they're ready 
gradually building that up as this term goes on um, with the aim of returning to a more normal school day um, the next term but we are constantly uh, reviewing and if we need to go in faster or slower then we will make that choice so that um, what we're doing is right for our children. This is just a little example timetable, you'll have this on your handout to have a little look at um, of what a typical week might look like at the moment. Um, introducing those shorter, those shorter English and maths lessons and again as I said putting all those other enrichment and fun activities in there. So mental health as I said is one of our golden threads. Um, it's something that we've really really promoted over the last academic year in school and it's something we will absolutely continue to do this year. Um, it's more important now than ever. Um, so we've had, we're having a big focus this term, we're doing lots of jigsaw lessons which is our new PSHE scheme of work giving the children lots of opportunities to talk about their feelings, to learn how to build a rebuild friendship um, and all those sorts of things. Um, we've also introduced recently something called the zones of regulation um, and at the bottom of the slide there there's just a picture that the children should be familiar with now and it's a way of teaching the children to recognise their emotions and to label them into one of the zones. Um, so we say the blue zone is our body's going a bit slow, we're, we're feeling maybe a bit tired, a bit sad. The green zone is our body is good to go, we're feeling happy, calm, relaxed, ready to learn. The yellow zone we say is a bit of a warning sign, we're starting to lose a little bit of control, maybe we're starting to feel a bit silly, we're starting to feel a bit anxious. Uh, and the red zone is when we feel like we're out of control of what we're doing, so maybe we're very angry, we're very cross and we're really, really, really scared. So we're just starting to teach the children that language so they can begin to express that. And the idea is that as they learn more about it, they begin to learn how to self-regulate and know what they can do if they want to move from one of the zones uh, to another one. So that'll be an ongoing piece of, piece of work that we're doing in school this year. Um, we're doing lots of metacognition with the children, so lots of learning how to learn, um, reminding them of what to do if they're stuck, for example, about, um, all those different skills that we've kind of had embedded with the children but that naturally um, they may not have been practicing whilst they've not been in school. Um, mindfulness, we're doing daily, so lots of time for them just to have a quiet time to calm down, to reflect, which they respond really well to. Mental health ambassadors has typically been a role that the Year 5-6 children do, but we are looking at, now that we're in separate pods, we are looking at, at possibly extending that down into lower key stage 2, so kind of watch this space on that one, it's something that children are always um, really passionate about. Um, and Hello Yellow will be coming up later this term, um, again watch this space, it's a fundraiser we did last year and we would like to do it again this year to sort of champion and promote mental health. Um, and to raise money for Young Minds, which is a mental health charity. Okay, so our topics in Year 3, we're really lucky. I personally think we get some of the best topics in the whole school. Um, as we've said, this term we're learning a lot about COVID-19 itself, um, but then we will move uh, on later in this term to pick up one of our more usual, term, uh, usual Year 3 topics, um, all about why the Titanic is famous, so the children will find out about what happened, um, do lots of lovely role play, um, do lots of lovely art and DT um, with that topic as well. Um, the next term, term two, is always a popular one. We learn more about how chocolate is made, so where it comes from, um, and uh, fair trade, um, which links in some of our global issues that we've been trying to teach the children about. Um, after Christmas, we will do what life is like in Stone Age. And then in term four, we do all about the ancient Egyptians and Last year we did a really lovely trip to the Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. Um, at the moment, at this time, we're not able to run trips um, and we will obviously be making decisions later in the year as to what is safe and what isn't. So um, really watch this space and then we will give you more information about trips later in the year as they come. Um, then in the final summer term, we look at if you have three wishes and we do the story of Aladdin. Um, and in the final term, it's a bit of a new, a new topic for year three, but we're going to be looking at lots of the sports competitions that were supposed to happen this year, that will happen next year, um, and look at lots of the countries around the world um, tying in with that. Okay, so moving on to the, the core uh, part of our curriculum now, the reading, writing and the maths. Um, we are beginning to drip feed aspects of reading, writing and maths into the curriculum, but we're working at the, the speed which is appropriate for the children. But once we get into full swing, this is what um, you know, some of the average activities that we would be doing in Willow class. 
So we um, continue to do guided reading in Key Stage 2. Um, there's a really heavy emphasis on VIPERS, which is a um, not so much a scheme, but it's a process that we use in order to ask the children questions about what they're reading. Um, there is a handout uh, which goes into more detail about it. I could probably sit here and talk about VIPERS for ages. Um, but there's a really, really heavy emphasis with the VIPERS on comprehension skills. So um, a big part of reading is decoding, but the main um, skill used within reading is that comprehension skill. So when you are doing reading with your child at home, it's brilliant that they can decode the words and they can read them, but can they actually understand what they're reading? And that's um, where the questioning comes in and, and, and the VIPERS. Um, we, we encourage the children to read for pleasure and to use the library as much as they possibly can. Um, so the children have opportunities within class to read independently. Uh, we have a class book on the go. We're currently reading George's Marvellous Medicine, which the children are absolutely loving. Um, so we try to promote that pleasure um, and enjoyment for reading as much as possible. Um, so just to reiterate what Miss uh, Roberts said, um, about the books that go home. Um, so in line with COVID restrictions at this time, the books are um, to be returned on a Friday and then quarantined for 72 hours. Um, and then the children can take new books out on a, Friday, um, on a Monday, sorry. Um, so that's a, another way that we encourage and promote reading within the school. Very, very exciting news. Our um, computing suite is going to be transforming into a library. So we have a very sort of um, small dingy space for our li library at the moment but um, once the uh, computing suite has been transformed into a library we will be using it as much as possible and I'm very very excited about that. Um, there are um, particular children within in every class that are highlighted as needing a little bit of extra support with their reading and we are incredibly lucky in this school to have a wonderful group of reading assistants. Um, so a select few children will be listened to um, throughout the week, they will be taken out for a 10 minute interval, uh, probably in the afternoon, um, and they will be listened to and they will be asked targeted questions to help um, encourage their reading. Uh, we will let you know at parents evening if your child is, is one of those children who's been chosen, um, but other than that it will be um, myself, Miss Roberts and Mrs Shepherd and Mrs Layton who will be listening to the children read within class time and during guided reading. Um, and again, just to reiterate what Miss Roberts said about reading at home, it's very, very important that you read um, and listen to your child as much as possible, not just reading with them, but also asking them questions about the text to ensure that they understand what they are reading. Um, and, and there is an expectation that they re should read five times a week, whether that's um, a school book or a home book, all of it's reading and it, it can be recorded in the read and record book for us to see um, and for you to let us know what's going on. But any issues with reading, you can um, you know, arrange to uh, uh, speak with a member of the office um, and um, a message will get through to us and we can try and arrange a time or place to, uh, to talk about it. Okay, so on to maths now. Um, the initial focus that we will be having with the children is on counting. Um, and then we will be moving on to place value. And those really are the very core of all of the understanding that the children will need to have in their maths. And then we move on to the four operations, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So it's a very similar method and system that was used in Key Stage 1 as well. Um, we've, we will start to do uh, little snappy sessions of uh, working on counting and place value. So your child might come home and start talking a little bit more about that. Um, we will be starting with some of the year two objectives and, and going over and relearning some of those things um, that they learned last year because there was a considerable amount of time when they weren't in school and we just want to make sure that all of the gaps are filled before we start moving forwards um, into the year three curriculum. There will be children within the class who need to be stretched and we will adapt and respond to that as and when it's necessary. If you want to see um, a little bit more detailed information about how we teach each of the, the four calculations, the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, there is a calculation policy on our school website. You can go and have a look at that. Um, lots of parents say that it's very different to the way that they learned maths when they were at school. So it, it is just a, a good way of, um, you know, if you want to do some work at home with your child on, on those four operations, it's a good way of seeing how we teach it in school so that you're using the same methods at home. Uh, we will be working from um, the year two and three ARE grids, which are the age-related expectations. Um, again, like I've said, this is to, to go over any um, skills that the children may have missed out in year two. 
um, and then we will start working on the year three ones. Um, the children are assessed against these age-related expectations at the end of the year, so it's basically our curriculum. Um, and there's a, a handout for you so you can see that in, in further detail. Um, similar to uh, the reading, in the reading record book there is a section for the children to, um, for you to record what your child has been doing at home with their, um, their maths learning. Um, so in year three we focus a lot on times tables, so you can, um, any opportunity that you've practiced um, times tables at home, whether it's using TT rock stars, whether they've done a little um, game or activity on the iPad or computer, whether you've practiced times tables um, to and from school in the car, um, or you've done some counting of twos, fives, tens, um, threes and fours, anything like that can go into the, um, the reading record book as well and it just lets Miss Roberts and I know um, any issues that you might be having at home and, and how we can further support your child. So we find that information incredibly useful. Um, so moving on to writing, um, in year three, uh, one of the, uh, well in any year group really, one of the most important things is giving the children a purpose for their writing. So we will plan in lots of um, creative um, experiences for the children to have so that they've got real life experiences to write from. We use lots of imagery and interesting text and things like that to hook their imagination. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I was an um, English leader um, before going off on maternity leave and um, writing was one of my real passions. Um, and so I'm very excited to be teaching in year three in Key Stage two um, and having the chance to get into some really sort of meaty texts with the children and to plan in some really exciting writing opportunities. We do have high expectations of the children, so um, presentation and handwriting is very important. If you would like um, support at home with, with helping your child with their handwriting, um, then you can contact us by the office and Miss Roberts and I can um, arrange for maybe some handwriting sheets to go home or for some activities. I know that parents quite like doing those sorts of activities at home. Um, and we really sort of drum into them that capital letters and full stops are very, very, very important. and. Um, we, we, we have those high expectations of the children all of the time because those are key stage one expectations and now they're in key stage two we want to start introducing um, more interesting forms of um, punctuation and, and things like that so those basics are really 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 important we encourage the children to write independently um, and we sort of move away from the amount of support that we offer them uh, the children will be editing their work, so we, we talk to the children about being authors and how authors edit their writing before it's published, um, and the children actually do that with their, with their own work. Um, and again, with the, with the maths and the reading, we'll, we will be starting with some of the year two objectives and then working our way up to the year three ones as and when the children are ready. Um, and by the end of the year, the children will have uh, built up their writing stamina, um, and if you'd like more information about the year group expectations of the handout, um, that will be um, online with this presentation and any questions again um, you can speak to Miss Roberts or myself. So just to bring all of that together going back through again through the home learning that we expect the children to do um, so the homework diary is there for you to record reading and um, maths. The children will be given weekly spellings when everything is up and running um, so there will be a daily spelling session in school where the children will practice keywords, um, which are also known as the common exception words. Um, and we will also be learning spelling rules. So some of the things that we learn in year three are plurals. Um, for example, baby, take off the Y and add IES. So we learn those rules for making um, simple nouns become plural nouns. Um, we look at uh, prefixes and suffixes, so adding on um, un, dis, mis, re, ed and ing, um, and we look at homophones, so words that sound the same but are spelled differently. So that's just a couple of examples of the types of spellings that your child will be learning in year three, and again we will start with the year two objectives and we will work up to the year three ones as and when the children are ready. Um, as the year goes on, um, the idea is that homework will start to be put on Google Classrooms, so um, just watch this space and um, as and when that's up and running you can, um, you can go on there and, and familiarise yourself um, and that will be sort of one of the main ways of us communicating the home learning that we would like the children to do with you at home. So I'm just going to talk about assessment and how we assess the children throughout the year. 
Um, very much this term we're doing lots of observation, we're trying to really get a gauge of where the children are and where gaps in their knowledge may be and where they're ready to be extended further so that can inform our planning for the rest of this term and beyond. Um, we will gradually introduce to more formal um, styles of, of assessing um, as, as and when the children are ready for it. We usually do three of the NFER, so that's a test papers throughout the year to give us that more formal um, level, if you like, of where they are and if kind of they're on track or if it gives some idea of if they need further support to meet the end of year expectations. And there will be papers looking at reading, and again, that's where it's reading, it's actually the text to themselves, but then they also need, need to answer questions about it. Um, it's heavily focused on comprehension and their understanding. Um, spelling papers, grammar and punctuation paper, and then there's three maths papers. One focuses on arithmetic, um, so their calculations and their face value, uh, and then the other two papers are heavily focused on more the problem solving and the reasoning, so actually can the children apply those skills? Um, and that again is, does uh, form a large part of our curriculum too. Um, we will also at points throughout the year assess the children's reading fluency, so we are keeping an eye on are they reading age appropriate texts um, fast enough and with a um, minimum amount of errors. And again, if, if we notice any concerns there, then we can look at doing extra support in school and we, we would ask the same that you would therefore put that extra support in at home to help them to catch up if that was the case. Um, we will let you know when we know when these assessment weeks are going to be, just so for your awareness and just so you know if they might be you know, particularly tired that week or just making sure they've had an early life and everything. Um, but we, we will let you know so you know um, when that will be. So I'm sure um, by this point you are familiar with our, with our learning characters, so I won't go through all of them, but these are our learning powers, Ellie we call them, and we just refer um, to the characters, to the children, just to help them understand the different things that they can be trying to do in their learning um, to, to be the best learners that they can be. And we do continue to reward the children for showing these skills, so it might be that you get a certificate once, um, once maybe things are back, back to normal a little bit more, once we're able to have assemblies again, whatever that may be. Um, it may be that you start to see certificates like, um, like we have done in the past for these. So swimming uh, is normally introduced in year three. It's uh, normally held in terms one, in year th uh, terms one and term three. Unfortunately, obviously, because of all the restrictions in place at the moment, we're not going to be able to go ahead with any swimming this term. Um, and we will keep you posted about when that's going to start. But just so you've got the information for when it does start, um, the children will need to bring in their kit on swimming days. Um, boys will need to have trunks and not board shorts. Um, and girls will need to have swimming costumes, please. Goggles are optional. Um, they will also need to have a towel. And please do send them in with a bag for their wet kit. And please do send girls in with a, with a hairbrush. Um, there, are, there are adults to, they're obviously supervising the children, but we do, um, they do need to get changed fairly independently. Um, so just having all those things there for them does make that all things run a bit smoother. Um, at near the time we will ask you just to let us know if your child's got any previous swimming experience or ability. That's just to guide um, the grouping that they will be put in initially, just to help make sure they're in the right group. Okay, so just going to talk about some of the things we're doing in school uh, to keep your children safe. Um, linked to COVID-19. I'm sure you're probably aware of, of this already, but um, we've obviously we've got the staggered drop-off and pick-up times. This is just to ensure that there's minimal crowding uh, in the entrance and exit areas. Um, so in Quad C, we come in at 8.55 and uh, we leave at 10 past three. Again, um, the children are encouraged to, we make sure that they all sanitise their hands on the way in and when they leave. And at various points throughout the day, we are sanitising the children's hands, obviously washing them thoroughly before they're eating. Uh, we have a one-way system in place around the school just to limit any, uh, any contacts within the corridors and at present we're not having any whole school assemblies or gatherings. Um, the children are taught within their classroom or outside. Um, we're not mixing with other classes. The only exception is that we are in a pod with beach class so that we're able to have play times at the same time with them. Um, obviously you're, you're aware by now of, of the symptoms that mean that children need to stay at home. Uh, if they have, so if they have a persistent cough, if they have a high temperature, if they have that loss of uh, taste or smell, we ask you please, please do keep them at home and you arrange testing as appropriate um, and, and isolation to in, um, as advised to ensure that we're obviously minimising any risks of, of, of any potential outbreaks within the school. Um, if your child is required to isolate and then, but they are well enough to be learning, we will provide um, 
things for them via Google Classroom, so please do keep those logins from last year. Any problems with, with that, do contact the school office, but there would be that option for you so that the children are able to continue with education um, if well enough to do so while they're not able to be in school. Okay, so I've talked a little, really a little bit about playtime already, but we are continuing to have playtimes um, as usual, but we're just not mixing with any of the other pods. So when we're playing, we're only playing at the same time and in the same space as um, as speech class in year four. Um, at lunch times, they do look different at the moment. We're not able to eat in the hall with all the children together. So the first half of lunchtime, the children go out for their play. And the second half, they are eating in the classroom. The classrooms are thoroughly cleaned first, before and after, and the children are thoroughly washing their hands. Uh, and children are staying at their table to minimise any any um, any children moving around and touching touching equipment. Um, they are allowed. They do. They are allowed to sit with friends. Um, but we will make sure that we, if there's any moving around, we are vigilant on cleaning surfaces. Okay, so finally we do like to celebrate and share all of the things that we've been doing and the children have been doing in the classroom and all of the extra enrichment opportunities that we've been doing with them. So please do follow us on Twitter and the information is on this page for you to do so. Um, and it's just a lovely way, parents, parents often report they like to see the pictures and sometimes videos um, of their child um, on what they've been doing. Um, if you think possibly you may not have given permission for your child to be on Twitter in the past but you, you may have changed your mind, please just make sure that your preferences are, update, are updated with the school office otherwise if we don't have permission to show their image online we obviously won't be doing so unless, unless we hear otherwise from you. Thanks very much for watching. Um, hopefully the presentation and the slides and the various handouts you'll be getting with this will give you uh, answers to any questions you may have. If they don't, please do contact the school office and we can, we can give you a call and get back to you. Thanks very much, bye.